Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Beat the Big Guys. I'm your host, Sandy Rosenthal, and today my guest is from the great state of Utah, more specifically, Salt Lake City, and his name is Michael Valentine. Hello, Michael. Hey, Sandy. How's it going? Everything's wonderful. Thank you. Thanks so much for asking. I'm really looking forward to our conversation today because you and I have actually experienced some very similar things uh, in our quest to beat the big guys. And I really, really look forward to our conversation. But before we start, some of our guests aren't familiar with you. So I'm going to go ahead and tell them a little bit about you. Is that okay? Yeah, sounds great. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Michael Valentine is a filmmaker and community organizer in Salt Lake City. Since 2019, he co-led a movement to protect a 104-year-old movie palace from destruction. And while working to save the theater for the future of Utah arts and film, Valentine stumbled into a massive illegal deal of fraud and corruption between the mayor's office the theater developers, a local businessman, and and an international real estate developing company. The theater was illegally destroyed a year ago, but Michael is still fighting for justice for it. A lot of artifacts were taken, including a giant Tiffany skylight that needs to be returned along with the land. He has the blueprints of the theater and is now planning to build it brick for brick, a term known as historic reconstruction. Wow, that's a very tall order on your plate. <laughs> yeah, I'm also uh, running for mayor right now uh, in the election this year for mayor of Salt Lake City. So a lot of stuff going on. Uh, always busy. <laughs> I look forward to talking all about it. But before we start, I wanted to talk just a little bit about how we came to be introduced to each other. Sure, yeah. So we, I'm, I'm, we all remember COVID. And we all remember how during the the depths of COVID, before we understood how it was even being spread, we all took long walks just to get out right. of the house because we couldn't go to work. We couldn't go to school. We couldn't do anything. And it was on one of my long walks with my uh, pug mix dog, I m- met another young woman. I mean, another woman. She's young. I'm not. And uh, she was from the other side of St. Charles Avenue, which is a kind of a major divider in the city of New Orleans. And we met each other and and uh, my friend Jen, she's now my friend, had a pug. So her pug met my pug mix. And so we, we just started talking to each other. Hello, I'm Sandy. I'm Jen. And then as time went on, we became friends. And so here we are some three years later. And uh, my my new friend, Jen, and her pug, Gus, uh, had found out about my podcast and my show. And it was she, our our now mutual friend, Jen, who introduced me to you, Michael Valentine. That's so funny. Yeah. It's like (laughs) these little small connections in life. They always, you know, lead to something else. So. Thanks to the pugs uh, for yes. this conversation today. <laughs> I'll never be able to think of you without thinking of the pugs. That's you know? great. <laughs> I, I, and uh, I, if I get a chance, I'll go get a get her, and I can show everybody my little pug mix. But but we have important work to do. We need to get to it right now because I know our listeners don't have all day. So Michael, I would love for you uh, to tell us your story, and I am going to be at the edge of my seat because I too want to hear this story word for word. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. The floor is uh, yours. Thank you so much, Sandy. Um, yeah, it's a really crazy story. Um, I'm a filmmaker and I always feel like this is like a movie, you know, or, or like, like this story has been crazier than some movies. Uh, real life is always more interesting. Um, so so um, I'm uh, 34 years old. I, uh, you know, from Salt Lake, filmmaker here. Um, always loved movies. Um, about 10 years ago in 2010 or so, a little more than 10 years ago. Uh, I was just walking down uh, the streets of Salt Lake and I stumbled upon this building. Um, so I just look inside and I'm trying to figure out what this is. There's, it's a vacant building. I've never really seen it before. Um, and when I'm looking through the windows, I notice a poster on the wall. And it's just this incredible theater um, from the 1920s. It's just massive. Uh, and I, you know, it kind of blew me away. And I was like, what is behind this? So I, you know, ran home, looked at the computer, 
uh, did some research and found out that this was an amazing historic theater here, just like hidden behind, uh, you know, uh, a vacant building in Salt Lake. Um, it's the Utah Historic uh, Pantages Theater. And uh, Pantages is an important name for, for movies, uh, movie palaces. Uh, it was a great big theater chain, uh, specifically mostly on the western side of the U.S., uh, California and all over. But there's a, a Pantages in Hollywood. Um, there's one in T Tacoma, Washington, uh, Minneapolis. Um, there's some up in uh, Toronto and different places. But basically, uh, just an incredible theater chain. Um, the uh, Hollywood one, they, they used to show the Oscars there and things. So our theater is like, you know, really cool because it's connected to all these other theaters. It's just, it's bigger than Utah. Um, and then I found out through research that um, the, the theater was, you know, um, just magnificent for the, the programming it was showing. Um, Babe Ruth came to a performance there one time. The Marx Brothers, Abin Costello, Will Rogers. Um, it was originally a vaudeville theater uh, when it opened in the early uh, 1920 uh, period. And then um, in the 30s, it became a movie house and started showing movies for um, a long, long time up until uh, it closed in the early 90s. Um, it, it has the record for, for showing The Sound of Music. Um, it ran for two years uh, when it first came out in the, in the, the 60s. Um, so really just incredible uh, history. And um, I always feel like Salt Lake in Utah um, has really like kind of lost uh, film history. People always think of California or New York or these other places, but um, we're kind of known for uh, the West John Ford and, and these different things. Uh, Mario Scorsese talked a lot about um, uh, the American film genres, uh, uh, the, the gangster movies, the musicals and the Western. So um, Utah is, is, is well at home for the for Western history. But basically after that, you know, I always loved the theater. Um, I was very excited that this, the city bought it right uh, shortly after that with the promise to restore it. And then I've just been following this, the, the story since then. Um, and, and in the summer of 2019, we were un, uh, sad to find out that um, the, the theater was going to be torn down all of a sudden. So we were all rushed to um, figure out what was going on. Um, and it turns out in 2016, the city gave these two developers, um, adjacent property owners, uh, exclusive rights to the theater. And they just really never tried to save, save it at all. They just wanted the land. Um, it, it's about an acre of land downtown Salt Lake. Um, a former councilman for the city thought it would, was worth uh, some of the most valuable land in Utah. Um, so they wow. just really wanted the, the land and, um, and uh, worked against the public since then to try to just, you know, get this theater destroyed. And uh, we uh, I originally, uh, as we said, um, was trying to just see it saved and restored as a filmmaker. In, in the in 2021, we did these um, studies to um, uh, for the city uh, request for grandma information, Freedom of Information Act. And uh, we, we got all these emails between the developers in the city basically colluding to hide the historic nature of the city. Um, they were asking for blanket grandma exemptions, trying to get the contract signed without the public ever finding out about it. Um, and this is a public building and it needed to go through public processes. And uh, this deal was illegal that violated Utah law, historic laws and Salt Lake City historic laws. So basically we've just been fighting uh, ever since then. And then uh, we uncovered that the uh, the mayor of Salt Lake, Aaron Mendenhall actually took illegal campaign donations from these developers while this deal was being negotiated. She never disclosed it. She never uh, um, recused herself from the vote. And uh, she's really just been ignoring the public this entire time about seeing this theater restored. Um, and uh, they've been lying just about every aspect about it. Um, they inflated the restoration costs by about $40 million. There's supposed to be public tours and surveys done in 2018 that were just canceled. There's supposed to be updated seismic costs in 2019 that were just canceled. Um, but one of the positive aspects about this is, um, you know, we, we were able to put together a really cool community team here but that extended uh, throughout the country as well because we uh, got on the phone and we talked to uh, Tacoma Pantages, the folks up there, our sister theater. It was restored in 2018. We've uh, worked with the League of Historic American Theaters, the national group, um, mm -hmm. an organization. We've also you know, been in contact with a, a great uh, group called Evergreen Architectural Arts, um, probably some of the best 
uh, restoration experts in America. They restored the Hollywood Pantages Tacoma, all of our sister Pantages theaters. Um, they uh, worked on the Library of Congress, uh, restored hundreds of theaters throughout their, their long um, career. Really amazing uh, restoration experts who all discredited the city's numbers, <laughs> by the way, of, of what it would cost to see restore. So, um, but basically last year, um, uh, or I, I guess in the uh, fall of 2021, we hired um, an expert to put the theater on the National Registry. And that kind of freaked the city out. They hurry and rushed to like get it destroyed because it, you know it would have gone on the national registry, it been officially historic, and then it would have been declared a Salt Lake City landmark and protected from demolition. But the city gave a, the theater away real fast, and then they destroyed it in um, April of twenty uh, of last year, April twenty twenty two. But I really think that just shows more of their guilt uh, because it really didn't help them. They just rushed to destroy this theater. Now it's just a big hole, and we're still fighting for justice and. Um, uh, we're we've, we're expi inspired by this um, this story um, in in England in 2016. There was a place called the Carlton Tavern that was illegally destroyed by some developers as well. But the uh, the city and 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 uh, um, uh, I think it was right out somewhere in London. They made them re rebuild the, the 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 tavern brick for brick. So we love that idea. And we actually you know mm. uh, did more research and found out historic reconstruction. It's a very tried and true uh, um, uh, process for, his, for his historic preservation. Entire towns were rebuilt uh, after World War II in Germany and Poland. Um, you know, they're working on Notre Dame right now from the fire. There's actually great talks about rebuilding Penn Station in New York that was, you know, destroyed several decades ago. So um, there's definitely a positive out of this situation. And I think Getting justice and rebuilding the theater brick for brick would make Utah one of the most progressive places for historic preservation um, in America and, and turn this uh, kind of horrible story into a, you know, a story that has a happy ending. And then, um, as I mentioned, now I'm running for the mayor of Salt Lake City too to bring justice to the people and have elected officials that actually serve uh, the public and the community and, uh, you know, do a lot of great things way beyond the theater as well. But uh, so that's kind of a... <laughs> A rough uh, breakdown in the story and uh, yeah we're very excited to, to be invited here today with you Sandy and like as we mentioned um, we were just posted on Instagram for a long time for years and years and um, suddenly our story exploded and we were getting picked up in, in London and New Zealand and all around the world and uh, we were able to connect with a great lady named uh, Nicole Curtis who has a show on HGTV Rehab Attic where she restores historic houses and she's kind of got a name and uh, so people were kind of connecting to us through her so um, anyway uh, fantastic to be here thanks so much well you get the prize for taking <laughs> a huge story and I, you get the prize for breaking it down and bulleting and describing and moving on I mean I, I am I am impressed um, you should run Thanks for so office. Much. It's hard. There's so much to talk about. I often forget. So it's but, been several but, years of this, but. And, and I know you're running for office, but that the ability <laughs> to condense a large, important story into um, an inhalable or um, manageable pieces for, for the for ordinary folk to understand right is a real skill. You, you, so which, <laughs> yeah, I am so, so impressed. And, yeah. and you wouldn't believe the, the list of things I've written down to discuss. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's crazy too, because I, I so much into that. Thank you. I, I mentioned we did a lot of research. And uh, when we, you know, stumbled into this corruption, we actually created a binder, uh, we call it the Pantages binder of corruption. It was so big, we had to get a bigger binder, but there's just documents, wow. and documents and documents. So it's definitely easy to get lost in the story here. But uh, I try to this, keep it. It will be up. impossible <laughs> to touch on. Excuse me. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, it will be impossible to touch on everything in, in, in the few minutes that we have. So what I'm going to do is jump to the okay. major things. Um, and, for, and if our listeners can always find out more um, by and we'll explain how to learn more about this at the end of the show. Um, but the one, d d am I understanding you correctly when the rebuilding of the theater is is the, in your mind is it it's going to be done by the people who destroyed it as their punishment for tearing it down? 
Well, that's kind of what happened in, in England with that mm -hmm. Carlton Tavern. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that will quite be the same situation here. We kind of are, you know, fighting to get uh, justice and damages kind of repaid. So we're, I kind of think the money would go into a fund. We actually okay. have architects and all the people that could rebuild it already on a kind of our team. So. And and who and who would pay? Well, uh, the, the the developers, yeah, the and the city, the city for who, all the people that were involved in this. Corruption. Okay, so yeah. that that's their punishment, and and I so and and also as I understand it, when they got word, this cabal of people, because it's never one organization or two organizations, right. they all work together. They have to. They probably even brought the media into this as well. Right. Yes? Yeah. The media has actually never really covered this story. They've been. So and so the media was prevented the from from writing about it. So bringing in the media also can mean that so the media won't cover it because they've been told don't give don't give these these um these uh people fighting fighting f to keep the theater don't give them a voice. So don't right. cover the story, right? So yeah. so they were looped in as well. Now I believe yeah. me I I know the playbook. So <laughs> So and and if I understand this correctly, when this cabal got word that you all were working on putting this theater on the National Register of Historic Places, which is so, in my mind, it's, it's a slam dunk. That right. scared them, and right. that's when they said, "Well, we'll just tear it down illegally," and yeah, knowing the, full well it was illegal. The timeline of this is pretty crazy. We, you know, the city was required to put it on the National Register to begin with. They never did. We went out of our way. We hired an expert uh, to do it. And then, um, you know, I went through the, the uh, to the city's historic uh, landmark commission. Uh, they agreed with us that it was historic. And then it mm -hmm. went to the state historic preservation office. They agreed. And then it was right when it was being sent to the, 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 you know, the national register to be placed on there. That's when they closed the deal and the developers objected as the new owners of the building. Wow. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. So then, the, the if um here, here you, you i'm gonna hold my thought and you go on sure i was just gonna say too i, I totally forgot to mention this but um the developers also uh filed like a, a slap suit against me a strategic lawsuit against public participation they um they filed a fake stocking injunction against me and they actually fabricated documents to do it i recently filed a, a complaint to the utah bar association against their lawyer um they basically lied and said i was um seen in their, one of their buildings this kern's building um, and then it was found out in the in the hearing, the, the executive of this company, Heinz, a guy named Dusty Harris, the one who filed the stocking injunction against me, it was revealed that he owned uh, about 15% of this big skyscraper tower they're trying to build about, you know, 15 to $30 million. So quite the uh, motivation to, uh, you know, come after and silence me here. So um, right. And that's another trick up this sleeve. By the way, that happened to me as well. I was threatened yeah. with lawsuit. Um, so that's another. They all the big guys are using the, the same bag of tricks. They're all the right. same. So yeah. the, 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 my question to you is, as, as angry as you were, and I'm sure you were angry <laughs> when that theater got illegally torn down. I, I'm also very familiar with um, th these all these these many many uh, organizations in this country devoted to historic preservation. So as angry as you were, these organizations, that's what their mission, mission for reason for being is, they must have been incensed by this illegal destruction. Yeah, and that's one of the things we've been fighting against that's been an issue is, um, you know, um, a lot of people in Salt Lake and Utah don't really know about the theater. It was closed for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned there's supposed to be public tours and things that they canceled on purpose because they didn't want anyone to know what was in there. To know about it. Exactly. They want the people to go in, walk in and see how beautiful the theater was and know all the history of, you know, Babe Ruth and the Marx Brothers. But, but yeah, we, we tried to reach out to a lot of national groups and try to get ass assistance and support. We, we uh, tried to apply for the theater on the uh, top 10 endangered historic places um, on the national level with the, the um, Historic Preservation Foundation and all that. Um, but yeah, we when just, I. Uh, yeah, go ahead. When I think about all of the incredible structures being destroyed by fire, uh, I mean, natural fire, not deliberately set fire, right. um, <laughs> flooding, um, de um, blight, when I think of all that going on, and that alone is 
probably, uh, you know, could fall, I know, 80, 90 percent. But when I think of all that and then I look at this, which is so utterly preventable. And the right. only reason it happened is because of greedy um, money. You know, right. some people could make money. This beautiful theater happened to sit on a valuable piece of land that right. other people wanted. You can't move the theater. And so they, they took it down illegally. There's something you pointed out that I, I, in, in my mind may have been the most important thing uh, that you have that could bring about um, vindication. And that is emails proving um, conversations between these the different parts of this cabal of people. Uh, so, so you actually have these emails proving their guilt. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, some pretty crazy emails we have. Uh, there was one where the the, the developers the, for the females asked for a blanket grandma exemption, basically to hide every all the information from public records, which is obviously illegal. They asked for uh, repeatedly multiple times for, um, you know, to get the contract signed before the public really ever found out about it. They wanted this deal closed behind closed doors, a backroom zero dollar deal. By the way, the um, they, they wrote down the price to for zero dollars. It was a, um, you know, they wrote down the entire thing. Um, so there was and then the, the other big uh, email we have, too, is. Um, there was a, a a redevelopment agency meeting where these you know deals were taking place. Um, one of them, uh, a gentleman from the uh, Preservation Utah local group here, uh, showed up and talked about how the theater was historic, how it was eligible for national tax credits, and all these things. Hours after the meeting, there's an email between them, uh, the city, and and these developers, Heinz and this guy Joel LaSalle. Um, colluding to hide that information from the public about what they're going to do about it and how to downplay the the, the fact that it is historic and uh, was always el eligible for tax credits and can be restored. So uh, we, we found out uh, other emails later on where they're writing the RDA memos, these public memos about the theater, the developers are. They're putting in stuff about um, you know, parks and these different things and just really lying about every aspect of the factual nature of of, of the theater. I, I mentioned they inflated the restoration costs. Um, right. We found out that they, um, you know, said the seismic cost would cost way more. All these things would cost way more. We talked to, you know, these groups, Evergreen, our, our sister theater in Tacoma. Uh, that one was restored in 2018 for only about 18 million. Uh, they were claiming the our theater would cost about 60 to $80 million to restore. The real costs were about 30 to, to 40 million. So, uh, quite a big difference there, uh, about $40 million more yeah. for really no reason. And then when the national experts who've restored dozens of theaters and uh, are actually in the field of historic preservation and, and restoration disagree with those numbers, you know that something's going on Right. Uh, when, you know, these people from the city who have no experience in this field are just making stuff up and, uh, Right. Um, when so when this cabal thought, oh, we, we have the solution, we'll just tear it down. So th they were wrong. So they if they thought you were just going to go away, <laughs> say, well, the theater has gone. There's nothing to yeah. fight about. It's over. Well, they made a big mistake. And, and the listeners out there, this is, happens all the time. The big guys get so confident that they they think they can get away with anything just because of their size. You know, this, this real estate developer out of Texas named Hine, they think just because they're so big, they're invincible, right. that they can't be stopped. Well, they are going to find out they were wrong. I wanted to touch on the, the media for just a moment. So we spoke sure. earlier about uh, how the the media did not report on the story when, when it needed to be reported because obviously... Um, different members of this cabal got to the media and convinced them don't give the um, what was the name of your organization? Fi um, please. Yeah, uh, the, the we, fighting we, we, call this. It, we call it Save the Utah Pantages. Uh, we've changed it now to Avenge the Utah Pantages. Okay, yeah, yeah. Joke. yeah, that, <laughs> that's probably a good idea. But we've, so, we're also a, a 501c3. We're friends of the Utah Pantages now. So. Right. So, so I, I, I know what happened. I can, I can just picture, I can see the conversations now. They told, yeah. don't give a mouthpiece to anybody from this organization. Don't give them a platform to get their message out. 
Right. But, but, but I'm going to say two things about that to our listeners. One, uh, to our listeners, you know, don't ever let the, th- the fact that the media won't report on your work be a reflection on the value of the, your work. If anything, right. it means that what you're doing is so important that the media is afraid to report on the, the uh, you know, you can't prove, prove this, but when you, when, you see, when you see something, you don't have to prove why it happened. You just know what you're seeing. And this is something the media should have been reporting on. But also the other thing I want to point out is the local media may have been afraid to report on it due to whatever repercussions that, that could possibly come. But national media doesn't care. Right, exactly. National media doesn't, can't be bought. Um, the New York Times can't be bought because of a little battle, not a little battle to them, excuse me, I didn't mean to, I, I mean, as far as the New York Times no, is no, concerned, you, yeah. <laughs> this, this, this theater in Salt Lake City, so New York Times doesn't care, the Washington Post doesn't care, the Los Angeles Times doesn't care. So, right. so as, a, as, a, as a, um, a, a, a note to you all, when the local media won't report on it, go to an outside media, go to a national media. Yeah. So what, what was it that brought your cause to a national and international tension, Michael? Yeah, it's a good question. I, um, you know, we were trying to get the local media to talk about it a lot. Um, they've actually kind of done the opposite. They would po- report stories, but they'd put report the infactual stuff. They would take the information from the city and kind of like spread it as pro- propaganda. Recently, there was actually an article in the Salt Lake Tribune here, our biggest newspaper, um, uh, last Saturday about how the, the the deal has just kind of fallen apart. They're not building this tower right now. You know, obviously they rushed the theater. Uh, this guy, Dusty Harris and Hines, they actually committed perjury in court last year by saying we're losing $100,000 a day on this. And then a month later, they uh, after the theater was restored, they went and asked for a year extension, completely just lying about all this stuff. Um, but, um, you know, uh, I think I think it was just social media. That's really been the key here because, mm-hmm. you know, we we just never cared about the 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 local newspapers or the TV. You know, we we'd go talk to them when they want, but they're reporting fake uh, lies about this. You know, they would always report the the fake restoration numbers, and I would give them the phone numbers to call national experts, and they would never call experts. They'd also downplay me a lot. They'd call me a film buff instead of a film director, and all these things, trying mm-hmm. to just discredit me and all this stuff. Um, but really just post it on social media. I would always just post sometimes like two or three times a day. Uh, you know, we'd put stuff on YouTube and, and Facebook and Twitter and we just never really shut up about this. And we would always just give them the facts and we made it fun. We, we actually, uh, uh, before the theater was restored, we had a guerrilla street theater where we'd take a projector out and we'd show movies on the side of the theater for fun. And we put out chairs there and made it a real community thing and like spread art and movies and, and, and culture and, and, uh, kind of try to make it this battle a fun thing um even though it it sucks a lot of the time but just posting um online a lot that's really what happened and suddenly you know people from outside of utah were watching this you know we we were on a podcast in london people were talking about us there Uh, we found this other some great friends in new zealand that were fighting for their historic theater there um all really all around the country people have reached out to us and from california and um uh, all over the place. So it's really awesome. But um, I really think social media is 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 the big factor here, you know. Uh, which social media, Michael? Um, uh, which one, which had, one specifically? I've always liked Instagram the most. That was the one that really helped us because um, uh, it just was able, we were able to show show pictures of the theater a lot and mm-hmm. it just spread really well. So I don't know what it is about Instagram, but it's, I guess, the one I was best at using. But um uh, yeah, we, we just post a lot, a lot there, but you know, the, the, the newspapers and the TV stations and all these things, they don't have as much power as they always used to historically. <laughs> um, cool. you know, if this was 20 or 30 years ago, it would have been a different battle for us here, but with, in, with Instagram and social media, it's been something where it costs us $0, you know, to just keep posting online. It costs right, us I hope. Thank you, Michael. I hope all your listeners have, have heard that it costs $0. Uh, you can take advantage of the 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 uh, the value of a photograph, and right. it it can actually go international. So never so use the tools, okay? And and Michael pointed out just now if it if things would have been different twenty or thirty years ago, but twenty or thirty years ago you would have used the t- tools available at that time. 
Right. So, but right. it's important to use the cutting edge tools available uh, at this time. Uh, Michael also spoke for a minute about how he was discredited. They, 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 they improperly stated his credentials and and probably misstated what it was he was trying to do. Uh, and that just that just comes with the territory when right. the big guys can't argue the facts and have no platform to stand on. They attack the messenger. And 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 uh, you, the listener out there trying to beat the big guys in your neighborhood, you should just take that as evidence that you're right. Otherwise, why would they bother um, to to discredit you? It's evidence right. that you're right and evidence you should you should keep going. I have one more question, um, Michael, but we're going to have to wrap up shortly. Uh, just just a uh, uh, ding, ding, ding warning. <laughs> um, federal involvement. I, I could have sworn I heard during during the the what your um, description of what's going on, that some of the things that they did were illegal on a federal level. Is that correct? Um, we're still looking into that. We, we definitely know this it violated um, city and state historic laws. I think okay. there's definitely some talks about, you know, this goes to the highest level of, of, of Salt Lake government. Um, Salt Lake's our capital city here in Utah, so it's our biggest city. Um, mm -hmm. This is the mayor's office. We're talking mm -hmm. about departments of the city, Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's some, there's some talks that's like, this is a pretty crazy situation. I actually filed official complaints against the mayor last week for her illegal donations and some unethical stuff she's been up to. Uh, I'm working on filing an official complaint over all the stuff with the theater. Um, that goes to the mayor's office. Actually, it goes to the city recorder, which then sends it to the city attorney. But the city attorney is appointed by the mayor. So there's not really any like way to get uh, accountability in the city to have this investigated. And so we're, we're interested to see what happens from these official complaints, because either they investigate them and hold the mayor accountable, or if they don't, then the whole city is in even more trouble and we, we escalate stuff to the state and beyond. So um, yeah, I, I am know. going to be following this situation. so closely. <laughs> uh, I, I know for sure. Now, if there's any of I, I promised our listeners, I would let them know for those who are interested in following uh, this quest. Um, how do our listeners learn more about it? Yeah, so uh, probably the best place is just the Instagram, uh, Avenge the Pantages, uh, Utah, Avenge the Utah Pantages. And we'll, we'll, we'll send you the links for that. And then I also have a, accounts for my my campaign for mayor. We're working on uh, just updating our our website, but that will be a great place as well. And then for anyone that wants some more information, we I actually uh, we we filmed an entire documentary about this um, inside the theater before it was destroyed. Um, it's on YouTube. You can just go search uh, "Save the Utah Pantages Theater." It's about an hour and a half, and, and we'll we'll give the links for that too. And uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. Thank to film you. That, so thank you, Michael. Is there before we wrap, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners who are trying to beat the big guys in their own neighborhoods? Yeah, I would say just keep up the fight. You know, this is a community effort. Um, you know, there's a lot of messed up parts about this. The theater should have never been destroyed. It was illegal the entire time. But the real story here is how these developers and these giant corporations, uh, this co this company, Heinz, based in Texas, is about manages about a hundred billion dollars in real estate. They're one of the biggest companies in the world in terms of real estate development. Um, so like the fact that they were able to like take over our local government to the point where they're getting public land that's worth about $20 million for free. And then they were able to silence the voices of people trying to speak out. It really is an erosion of our democracy and a corruption of, of, you know, our civic values and what makes America so important. And, uh, um, no, no, no company or corporation should be usurping the people of, of any city, any town, any state or anywhere in America. It's really anti-American to me and anti-democracy. So that's the real story of this, but I, I real fast, I just would like to say, keep fighting. You know, there's hard days. It gets, it gets, it gets hard to keep fighting people that are so much bigger than you. If you guys are just a little group. But I, I would say to, to not give up and know you're on the right side of history and you know that you're you're stepping up and doing something for the community. So, yeah. Thank you, Michael. There. And no, no group, no organization is so big they can't be brought down. I've seen it over and over and you too will prevail. Thank you so much, Michael, for all of your yeah, efforts. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. You're welcome. And, and you all, the listeners, thank you so much for being here. Um, for those of you who like to watch video instead of listening to a podcast, you can see this video. It'll be posted to my playlist 
on Sandy Rosenthal, and the playlist is called Beat the Big Guys. Uh, thank you all of you for listening. Don't forget to rate and subscribe to my podcast on all your favorite platforms. It just takes a couple of seconds. And remember, eat, no matter who you are, you too can beat the big guys. Okay, stay with me.